Hello and welcome to MacCormack's weekly Apple extravaganza. I'm Chris Finn. I'm Matt Bolton. And in this episode we talk about Apple packaging. Fancy phones. And 4K displays. Let's start with what little news there is in the world of Apple this week. Nothing much has happened this week in Apple. No. Re- genuinely. Not, not, we're not wait- that we know of. Well, exactly. We're waiting for iPhone 6. Yeah, the 9th, pretty much. 9th of September. Holding um, pattern. So we're in a holding pattern for that. So I thought... Oh, they did uh, update some of the Pro apps. That's true. With that's true. B- bug fixes and stability improvements. And there's a nice article on the FT, which I'll link to in the description below, about uh, the app Gold Rush, which was a really interesting piece oh, about good. the app economy. However, screw all that, I just thought we'd have a little look at some Apple packaging. Because, okay. like, Apple packaging... God bless them. It's beautiful stuff. Like, the most humble products get such care lavished on them. And they look so, so nice. Like, the experience of owning an Apple product starts with the box. Yes. Like, I remember writing a feature about Apple packaging ages ago and looking at... Sony, at the time, was doing its high-end Walkmans against the iPod. And it was just a mess of like leaves of brown cardboard and pull things apart and those little bits that tuck over and tuck in and it was just horrible. Um, whereas with Apple, I always likened it with the original iPods. Do you remember you, you took a sheath off and then you opened it almost like a book. Right. I always likened it to like cracking open a geode and seeing this sort of <laughs> glittering prize inside. It was a beautiful experience. And like it just does such nice stuff. Like just the gentle act of doing that. Now and I, I know inevitably I'm gonna get comments in the comments below call me an Apple fanboy and call me worse about this sort of stuff. But it's just so pretty, like the grandest products. And to be honest, I'm not really even one of these people who particularly fetishizes Apple packaging and I know a lot of people will put it on shelves and, yeah, and keep it and off. treasure it. Yeah. But I'm not really that, but like, it's just lovely. It's, it, there's an element of it you almost feel is, is part of the indoctrination. Yes. Uh, and it is part of the intention of making you proud feel proud that you bought something Apple by starting with m- making the packaging lavish, yeah. by making it clear, or as as clear as what is ultimately cardboard boxes can be, that uh, this is a high-end yeah. something, whatever there's a, it is. There's a little bit of love lavished on them, so there's a little bit of embossing, or rather debossing here, so that the home button is recessed. There's a block foil silver on the Apple logo here. There's yeah. this kind of waxy surface to the packaging. Um, and, and, uh, like, and, and, of course, in all cases, the life-size product yeah. on yeah. the front. You, this is what you are buying. It is this. Yeah. Um, and always, when you open them up, the, the product is just sort of displayed. It's there for you. It, it's, it's a real, genuine experience. And in fact, I came across the other day my packaging from my Newton. Right. Now, this is obviously comes from a very different era in Apple. Yes. Um, but at the same time, the same excitement is there. There's the product, and in this case, you go on to lift flap. Remember, not, not remember when you had flaps. these? <laughs> I love lift flap, and this is t- telling you all about the different um, uh, features of the Newton and it's the operating system. And let's bear in mind, the Newton was a wonderful, and b killed off by Jobs uh, on his return to Apple after his ousting. But like, it's, a, it's the same sense of excitement and joy. And even though the sort of fit and finish is much crappier than they, they do these days, the same care has been lavished on. Having this as an experience. Was this one also fancy inside? No. So that's that's that is an area where Apple has improved. So this ah, is the classic. Yes. This is the stuff that I was really against with that Sony product. Yeah. It's all this kind of little flappy, boxy, openy things, which is which is which is like looking at this stuff now. This just looks rubbish. But yes, um, it's, it's definitely. Uh, <laughs> It, like it's a classiness thing. Yeah. Like it, it just it, if it feels classier to own from the first moment, then th- and then you, you speak more nicely about it. You speak higher of it. Yeah, as I say, the experience starts before you've opened the box. And even for people like me who who don't particularly fetishize this packaging, I'm still it, it amuses me because in most cases I'll get something out of the box and I'll immediately throw the box away. You know. Yeah, with yeah, these, yeah. With these, you don't, you don't. That's not your automatic reaction. You don't automatically do that. I keep all my gadget boxes for a while, just because I'm paranoid about having to return them immediately yeah, yeah. for whatever reason. I tend to sort of keep a few boxes. I'll keep things like I've got my telly box because if we move, that's quite nice to package it back up. That for safety's sake. Um, but in most cases, with most things like a toaster or a kitchen blender or something that doesn't work in the kitchen, a lamp, um, yeah. you know, the Ikea yeah. sort of stuff. You just immediately you rip open the packaging and it's done its job by that point. It's protected and transformed right. thing, yeah. recycle it. But with the Apple stuff, they've, they've not only made you 
start the experience of ordering the product before you even get it out of the box, but they've, they've kind of made the box something that is not immediately throwaway. Yeah. Um, I also, yeah, I mean, I tend to kind of keep my iPad box. I couldn't even tell you why. It's not yeah. even that, that it's nice. It just takes up a bit of space. But yeah. I don't know, you kind of think, if I was going to sell it on or something, that's a that's a genuine, a nice... genuine practical advantage to keeping the packaging is that selling stuff boxed on eBay will command a 10, 15, 20 percent premium depending on the product. Yeah. Compared to selling it bare, and part of that is because the buyers want that same experience. Yeah. They want that first out of the box experience, and we have talked before and been um, roundly criticised uh, by YouTube commenters about the, the new Apple product smell, but. Um, uh, which uh, trust us is actually a, genuinely is a thing. Um, when you open an whatever plastic, product, whatever, whatever, whatever Foxconn is using um, uh, to to put things, in, it, it does have a, a, a distinct smell. And you know that that whole experience is such a integral part of being of being indoctrinated, as you say, into the the world of Apple. Yes, <laughs> yes. As uh, clearly you've... Uh... As clearly I have been. Um, let us know in the comments below. Uh, do you keep your boxes? <laughs> Shh. Not you. Shh. Uh, do you keep your boxes? Do you throw them out? Are you sentimental about them? Um, do you keep them for practical reasons, for resale value, or merely for sentimental reasons? Let's move on to the wider world of tech. This week, Sharp has announced a phone, which it does yes. every so often, but not super often. Yeah. Uh, the Aquos Crystal. I've seen this. And it is effectively, for all intents and purposes, an edge-to-edge -edge display on three edges. So it's just a lip at the bottom, something a little bit iMac uh, about a it chin. almost, except that it doesn't have the black bezel of an iMac. Mm. Um, but yeah, so the, the display appears to reach the top and sides with just a little, in fact, it's a silver chin, much like an iMac, mm. or kind of white silver. Um, but with nasty aquas. Their branding isn't particularly branding. pleasant, it has to be said. Um, but it's it's an interesting step forward mm. for um, possible future phone design. Mm. Um, the interesting thing, it, like, it actually does, it's not an edge-to-edge -edge display. There are a couple of millimetres of clear plastic or glass, I suspect plastic, mm. um, around the edge, but it's so close as makes no odds. Yeah. It's the kind of thing you can imagine yeah. Apple doing and saying it's an edge-to-edge -edge display and the technology isn't quite there yet, but it's so close that you Gorgeous, think, yes. edge to edge glass. Yeah. That's better than your usual attempts. Yes. <laughs> we should say that was of your attempt at Tim Cook. Yes. Because people may not realize it. Yes. Um, but Mel Gibson. Yeah. But it's otherwise, it's actually quite a low mid range phone. Yeah. It's, As if it's sharp, it's, in fairness. Yeah, it's $240 ish to yes. buy. So it's quite nice. Yeah. Um, and it's a 720p screen instead of 1080p, etc., mm, yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. But uh, it is kind of a, it's not a huge leap forward in phone design, but it's kind of, if you can do this in a £240 phone, suddenly I'm Imagine. wondering what we would like to see in an iPhone 6. Mm. It's that kind of, it sets the information, the information, the imagination <laughs> ablaze. <laughs> That's that, the new corporate slogan for Matthew Bolton. Sets the information ablaze, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and sort of Julian Assange sort of way. Um, the, it's interesting as a move for Sharp because Sharp has never really figured particularly highly on anyone's radar as a as a phone maker these Not days. Not massively. Early in Android, well, I say early, a little bit into Android's life, it was doing a couple of um, fun things. Mm. And I think it was using the Equus brand because it was doing some, some of the nicer displays. Yeah. But I think everyone just kind of overtook it and it got left languishing, not doing much interesting for a bit. But this is quite flagshipy. It's not flagshipy in the sense of uh, flagshipy. That's a horrible word, sorry. It's not flagshipy in the sense that it's a very high-end aspirational phone, but it's flagshipy in as much as it's it's, so, it's uh, sharp going, hey, we can do this stuff too. It's a pretty big statement. Yeah. yeah. And, and like it's a good thing because it's, you know, you're competing with Samsung who have a huge amount of um, clout in that area now mm. and HTC is coming back into its own mm. and so being able to come out with a low mid-range phone that everyone on the tech blogs is talking about it's desirable it's actually you know well done really, yeah. really well done yeah. uh, it's, it's a little bit thicker than yes. you'd like and it's quite like the back of it sort of dimpled back which is look quite nice yeah a little bit like the um, Samsung Galaxy S something 
four or five. Yeah, I, I think, think it was could have been before. Um, has yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the branding on the front because that's obviously one thing that's um, that distinguished the iPhone from the get go. Not only did it not have AT and T branding in the front, and reportedly there were enormous yes. battles over that for, as you can imagine, for very good reasons. AT and T, of course, being the partner that Apple launched the iPhone with exclusively to begin with. Not only that, but there wasn't any Apple branding in the front, there wasn't any iPhone branding in the front. No. The only branding that's there, which has now since gone, that you could argue, was the little squircle, the, the rounded yeah. off square of the home button, which obviously with the Touch ID system in the iPhone 5S has gone. Yeah. Um, but there's, uh, there, there, was, there was nothing on there as a traditional branding exercise, and that's still not true. Even for that uh, Chinese company whose name I always forget, Xiaomi, the yeah. one that copies Apple, yeah. they put their branding on the front of it. Um, uh, which is amusing. They copy Apple in so many things, and then they go, "Ah, the one thing." People, just just people to remind you, it's us. to remind you that you bought a cheap, crappy knockoff of of Apple. We will put our branding in the front. But I do wonder if it's uh, if it's a cheap and crappy enough knockoff. If you can just scratch off with a compass or whatever, like people used to do. It. Do people still have compasses? I don't do know. they still? Maybe just school kids, probably. Yes. The only people who are being taught that compasses are are a useful and valuable you piece need. of yeah. But it's it a nice looking phone. I will I will admit it's a nice looking phone. It's linked to in the description of the video below the story on the Verge, um, which I spoke about it earlier. And there's some lovely big photographs there. Have a look and uh, and see what you think, basically. Yeah, I just thought it was a particularly interesting. Yeah, if someone can come from nowhere and do this in a mid-range phone, <laughs> come from nowhere. Too sharp wouldn't like to be described as coming from nowhere. I'm sure they wouldn't. But it's been a while since they sponsored Manchester United. <laughs> That is certainly my barometer <laughs> by which I measure the, the success and uh, cultural capital of a mobile phone manufacturer. Well, where are AIG now, I ask you? Let us know in the comments below uh, what you think of that phone and indeed what you think the iPhone 6 will be like. Let's move on to our, let's move on to our kit of the week before I kick something else over to my right. Um, Matt is still here behind this um, large 4K display. Uh, I've just finished writing a group test of 4K monitors for Mac format. In the issue that will be out on the 5th of September, you can read the results. This is one of them, a random one of them. It's not necessarily one that wins or one that doesn't, but it's just one we have in that group test. Uh, and we thought we'd have a bit of a chat about 4K in general, yep. um, but about the, this, the, the group test that we did. This is a 28 inch panel. 3840 by 2160. In terms of pixel resolution. Now, Mac OS can deal with that in two ways. It can either it give you the equivalent of a 1920 by 1080 a full HD display at twice the resolution. So yes. that is equivalent of like a Retina display on a MacBook Pro or an iPad or an iPhone. Yeah, it works in exactly the same way. All the images are at 4K resolution, yeah. but the size of everything is as if it was 1080p. Yeah. It's incredibly hard to explain this, as I found to my cost in this uh, in this group test. But basically, what you're seeing in this display here is the equivalent of a 1080p screen, except and what we we just we we've tried, we just cannot show you properly the effect of the detail here. But if you were here, um, then it'd be quite a crowded room. But um, if you were here, you'd see that everything is spectacularly smooth. Everything's really really clean and clear and beautiful and crisp and lovely. Yeah. Um, however, the other way you can do it is what I'll do now. So you can see the size of this. I, uh, sorry, uh, Safari window and the Maps window on here. If I switch to full resolution, so we're driving one-to-one -one pixels, so that for every one pixel that's on here, we're powering one pixel. So it's the equivalent of the same resolution you should find on a non-retina display, but stretched over the full 4K thing here. You'll see what's happened is that... Has it changed? I can't yes, see it. Yes, it has. It's good. <laughs> it's tiny now. <laughs> You'll see what's happened is everything's gone incredibly tiny. Um, now. Frankly, it's mildly masochistic to use a 4K display in this mode for most people. This is literally the equivalent of four 1080p screens yeah. stacked up. Exactly. If you, if you imagine, if you've got a TV in your front room that is full HD, so it's 1080p, you imagine taking four of those and stacking them in a grid, two by two, um, that's the number of pixels that we're driving here uh, onto this one thing, the amount of detail, but it's, it's compressing that space of your four 55-inch TVs into this 128-inch panel. Um, so everything's really tiny. There are reasons you do this, though. Yeah, particularly in video editing or mm, arguably in photo editing, because it still gives you a bit more space for the photo. Yeah, uh, deprecating the chrome. But it does mean that your, your chrome would be very, very small. Music editing, the number of tracks you could have on the screen is lots. Yeah. I'm being hidden behind <laughs> this. 
And, and even for um, uh, we, we t a lot of developers here at Future, and we talked to them about it, and they get quite excited, particularly because these most of these will rotate uh, portraits as well, yes. which looks preposterous with a, with a 16:9 display. I'm a big fan of it with a 4:3 or a 5:4 aspect ratio. But once you put one of these portraits, it looks preposterous. But the amount of code you could have on there, which is actually genuinely useful if you're trying to work out yes. relationships between Although stuff. Although if it was in the text at 4K size, it would be unreadable code. There you would be lots of it. Just a magnifying glass, it'd be fine. But uh, also, if you're an app developer, if you rotate this, then you can easily fit an iPad Retina's native resolution on this screen. Yeah, you can just about do it even when it's at this uh, just yeah uh, orientation, but uh, only, only just. Gives you a bit more flexibility if you yeah. have it yeah. the other way. But um, they are, they're genuinely lovely. And you know what? They're not expensive. The cheapest one in our group test was £444, which is the price you'd be th talking about paying for a 1080p display, what, three, four, five years ago? Maybe not even that. It's, yeah. um, it's really, really... The, the, the panels have started off cheap. They've started cheap. You can get expensive ones. There's ones yeah. that are like 13 grand, you know, for medical imaging and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, for the consumer level stuff, they've started quite cheap and it'll only get cheaper it's partly to do with the panel technology yeah because uh all macs and ipads and the iphone i guess all use ips panels in yep. plain switching means they're super viewable from all angles and have very good color accuracy and very broad color gamut as well like that yeah uh whereas most of the ones in our five of the six in our group, test, six in our group including this one are twisted nanotube new Pneumatic? The, the TN. TN panels. Shall I just Google what that, what that is? Just quickly. Uh, yeah, our TN panels, which means that they don't have quite as good viewing angles and not quite as wide a colour gamut, but they are uh, more responsive, good for games. Twisted pneumatic. It is pneumatic. Yeah, right. well done. Um, just a little bit of live uh, Googling there. Just twisted nanotube. They're not from the future. <laughs> Uh, but they're they're really good and and you know what once I, I spent um, a few weeks working with these and going back to my iMac on my desk at normal resolution was yeah wasn't, it wasn't particularly nice it's I, the same as it's literally exactly the same as going from a iPhone four to an iPhone three GS I had one of these when we had when we reviewed the Mac Pro late last well last Christmas twenty thirteen um, and going back was bit of a shame yeah. and I still haven't like I was like well I will get something 4k I committed myself then I was completely sold yeah. on it but I'm still kind of waiting yeah. these were really nice but at the moment I don't have the right kind of computer to drive on if Apple were to release a 4k iMac which we've spoken about before so yeah. check out that episode so I think I'd be pretty suckered into that yeah one thing I mentioned really quickly before we finish we're currently driving this from the 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 the, the dogs, the absolute best laptop Apple makes. Yeah. Uh, the most recent 15-inch uh, uh, Retina MacBook Pro powered by Core i7 or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, display uh, processor. Um, but uh, we find that um, we can power these things with much older computers. In fact, my 2008 MacBook Pro, as long as you connect it over DisplayPort, which is the only connection that will support the number of pixels we're driving through this, um, it, it, it powered it, and it was a, a native res. HDMI will support it. I, my, my, my laptop doesn't have that. Yeah, not on your laptop. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. And there's even more details about uh, what the differences are between HDMI and DVR and uh, DisplayPort and 30 hertz and 60 hertz in that uh, group test out 5th of September, as I say. So look out for that at uh, NewsAgents and indeed in the Mac Format app edition, uh, which you can get at macformat.com forward slash iPad. And you can get the most recent issue of that at any time by taking out a free trial subscription completely free. And um, you can catch up on previous episodes of the show by clicking the link in the middle of the screen. And of course, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel channel at youtube.com forward slash Mac format UK for more of us and other people talking all things Apple. That's it for this week though. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> good, good. Nice to save that. <clears throat> For next time you're about to start. <laughs>